Wanga out on the wings with Ward and Arat and Kilian Hamdawi at 15. Uh, Sigons on the bench. Van der Mest, the very large, large back rower from South Africa, also there with James Hall as well. The Leon team, there's no sign of Joshua Tuasova in the starting 15. You'll see him on the bench in the in a moment. But Dumortier, uh, second highest try scorer, try scoring machine with 10 so far this season. Veradamu, Rigard, Nekataki with Arnold at the back. Koyo linking up with Jean-Marc Dusan. They don't have Leo Belder, um, who ruptured his cruciate ligaments in his right knee against uh, Yusap Papanyon last weekend. Uh, Sopawaga is actually on the bench, and that is uh, something of a of a bonus for this Leon team because they'll need him to come on and make his mark. But those forwards, very strong pack. Uh, they've got Alan Saganadze, the Georgian, Dylan Cretton, who of course has been out pretty much half of the season uh, with uh, numerous injuries, but uh, very important in the lineup. Tofa Fenua, Tau, Lambi, Bamba, Shakrase, and Sebastian to uh, Tofa Fenua. Uh, quality players, but. Um, to a sober on the bench. Uh, the X Factor coming off the bench. I would rather start with the X Factor than having <laughs> come off the bench against a team like Stade Francais who are playing very fine rugby this season. As would I. And I mean, one of the best in the business. But I expect this to actually might be counterintuitive for this type of type or stage of the season. But I expect this to be a very open game. Both sides with a style. They like to put air on the ball, play to the wide channels. And I expect this to be a very entertaining game of rugby. But absolutely, as you mentioned, Seku Makalut, Joshua Tuasova, X Factor on both sides. Plenty of fire to come in this game and should be an absolute cracker. The last time that Leo managed to qualify for the playoffs was 2019. So they are keen to get themselves back in there. But uh, Garbajos are under a little bit of pressure. And uh, there are players who uh, put together a little delegation and uh, com started made a formal complaint against him. Uh, we're gathering information as we go along, but uh, that's coming uh, from... Uh, uh, from from news sources in France, and we, uh, well, hopefully it won't derail what they're trying to do. And of course, I don't know why there um, there is disappointment and frustration within this team because they're doing pretty well and they're they're in a very fine position. So uh, uh, we don't know too much about that. All we know is that they're coming here, and if they do win, they qualify for the playoffs. All we know is that does not smell good. If a group of players are going to see the president at Lyon, Jan Rubert during this the week and asking for him to be removed before they even make the playoffs something has happened that does not smell good for Xavier Garbajosa and the rest of his helm here in Lyon it looks like he could be heading for the exit before the end of the season which is not a good sign yeah I remember he um who uh, was the coach at uh, Montpellier. That was after he had uh, had a stint at La Rochelle. So he's doing the rounds and, and, and getting lots of experience, but uh, uh, not settled in at each game. It's his first season at Lyon, of course. You know, he replaced, uh, there is, of course, uh, Pierre Mignoni and also Frank Azema, um, who, who, who linked up with him. Of course, Frank Azema uh, losing his job at, uh, at Clermont. But... Um, yeah, coming in and, and taking over at Lyon with big ambitions in a city that started to show that they really want to win. But, and, of course, they managed to win silverware last season. Uh, that's not something they're, they're capable of doing in the Challenge Cup or in Europe this season, of course. It's Toulon who are going to be playing against Glasgow next weekend in Dublin. Um, but they can still fight for the Brenner Shield. And getting your hands on the Brenner Shield, you know, is like getting your hands on the Holy Grail, you know, if you are... Um, if you if you if you're any kind of a knight in the in the in the in the Middle Ages, so I think that we can most in the Dark Ages. Sorry, <laughs> I think we can understand just how important it is for a French club to get their hands on the shield. This is the 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 the, the corridor that takes you through to the side of the pitch. Pretty pink, pretty snazzy, pretty Max Guazzini to a certain extent. Uh, this was all sorted post. Max Guazzini, but you can understand that, uh, well, it's all about the show, isn't it? Uh, David Aradu, there's Max Guazzini there right in front of us. And uh, we are celebrating uh, the team of the class of 2003, the team that managed to lift that uh, Brenner Shield there. You see Fabian Galtier, uh, there's uh, Remy Martin, there's uh, Mr. Dominguez, of course, uh, Mathieu Blanc, Christophe Dominici, uh, all of these legends of Stade Francais, Jérôme Fiol, Artur Gomez, uh, Pat Tobacco, Steph Glass, um, who you saw there as well. Some incredible legends. They're all here, and they're all appreciating these players as they come out. 
It's a wonderful night, a celebration of rugby. Stade Francais here to try and deliver and to finish off uh, what they've actually started uh, this season, which is to get themselves into the playoffs, get a home advantage in the in the playoffs, and then take it from there. And who knows what they're capable of doing, Johnny? Well, that's it. And history tells us as well, if you secure a home quarter final, it plays right into your hands. Another man looking stressed, Xavier Garbajosa, under a bit of pressure this week. Players going to his president, asking for his removal, but all on the line. Penultimate weekend of top 14 rugby, and a home win from Stade Francais would see them reach a home quarter final, which would be huge for that man, Gonzalo Casada, and his men in pink. Stade Francais. Miss France, 2022, bringing the ball on. It's all very showbiz in Paris. Come on, the city of love, the city of lights. It is most definitely, you know, all about the glitz and the glam. Max Guazzini's um, style, verve and swagger, just um, rubbing off still uh, and uh, showing us exactly what uh, is a, uh, just a little chuck of the ball. But uh, a nice little moment here on a wonderful evening. And, uh, you know, they, there, were, there were calls to try and get a big crowd here tonight. Let's hope that, you know, they start to fill up the stadium. Adrian Marbo, the man in charge. Denny Grenier is the TMO. These are the two key figures in tonight's encounter. We do have a big crowd, which is fantastic. Uh, whether, or not, whether or not all of the seats are filled, we'll have to wait and see. Baptiste Coyo is the man, and uh, we will see exactly how he deals uh, with Arthur Coville as we see Leo Barry get the game underway. The Pink Army looking to try and finish off uh, round 25 with a victory here against Leon, who would love to get themselves victory and a place in the top six. The interesting thing is, is that all of the other teams who uh, are still capable of finishing in the uh, one of the playoff spots will be watching this religiously to find out exactly how Leon get on. Because if Leon do lose, Bayon are still in with a chance, Toulon are still in with a chance, and uh, and also uh, uh, Union Bordeaux Bagel will uh, probably be in a better position if Leon don't win. That is it. If Leon win today, they can wrap up their place in the top six. And they'll say goodbye. Oh, big error already. Uh, not just by anybody either. That's a uh, big error from Dumortier. Nervy start from Leon. We were just saying if they win today, they wrap up their place in the top six and make the quarterfinals. Ball kept in play by Hamdawi. Again, simple ball in to backfield. A little bit loose on the pass, lack of understanding in the backfield, and a big opportunity now for Stade Francais to attack this game. With a scrum in a very decent area of the field. Yeah, they'll fancy the chances here. Of course, it's 40 days after they managed to, uh, to beat Leon in the uh, last 16 of the Challenge Cup. So the third encounter that they are playing tonight. Makalu off the back, here he goes, gets the ball out. That's nicely done by uh, that man, Barry. Here they go again. Koval, good support. Hello, Emil. And a little kick down through into the corner, sneaky. Oh, it's kept in. That's uh, nicely done. I think maybe he was over the line. Oh, no, it's just a forward pass, in fact. That was sneaky. Got in there, beautifully flipped back in, just showing you what they're capable of doing, Alex Zarate. Again, two on two on the outside channel, just choosing to stick that ball. But it was this defensive read. The work by Makalu, very good to turn the shoulders in, but it was this spot blitz. And Nakatasi coming up on Hamdawi, stopping the ball dead. Saved a two-on-one on the outside, extremely well read by the winger. Defensive scrum and uh, desperate measures needed here for Jean-Marc Doucin. 
Who will logically clear this unless Cuello gets the chance to box kick from behind. And uh, well, there's just a little bit of a legal play. I think they were just coming in at an angle. Uh, it's a successful scrum there for Leon. It'll just give them a bit of breathing space. They'll, they'll take whatever they can from these uh, little situations. It look like both of the Alo Meal brothers getting their angles a little bit wrong. A bit strange since they, uh, they spent quite a few years uh, growing up together. They should know their angles, Johnny. They should. Their geometry <laughs> should be better. And a disappointing place to give away a penalty as well. On the five-meter line, nowhere really for Leon to go. <laughs> a, little j a little bit of jiggery-pokery. <laughs> but he's cool you. As all scrum halves would, complaining, <laughs> gesticulating to the referee. I thought he was going to have his, little, you know, tie the laces at one point, you know, but um, didn't happen. Just the pull of the lace, sneaky little play, bit of play. Uh, Stade Francais just uh, moving off. It's Hirigoyen and hit back by a very strong defensive hit coming from Dylan Cretan. Very strong in defence. It's good work from Stade Francais, working very well. Barry gets the ball out. There's uh, Arate trying to get the little grubber through. It just comes off. That man, Lombi, Hamdawi. And you don't really want to run into Veradamu. He's strong, isn't he? Becker Saginadze. There's the kick over the top, nicely done. If he can pick it up, oh, it's nicely picked up. Good footballing skills there coming from Leo Barry. Former Massey man, it comes out from Coville. Coville, the opportunity. Little kick through again, there's so many defenders back, and Dusan is pushed out of bounds by Makalu. The idea of kicking that is a little bit questionable. Uh, Jeremy Ward, the South African, um, did he see all of those defenders coming back into position because they were dotted everywhere? It just seems that whenever their number's on, with their attacking line, they're opting to go to the backfield. It must have been something that was pre-approved during the week, because that's four already. Little chips or grubbers. Barry with an excellent one to gather himself over the defensive line. Arate as well, grubbering through twice. But the upshot is a line out in the five-meter line, a decent chance to attack. Ivaldi to Briat, perfectly taken, but... I'm afraid that there was a little cross in the line out and there uh, will be a penalty going against Stade Francais. And Baptiste Pazenti, known for his, uh, his physicality, just uh, crossing and obstructing and, and blocking, just preventing the Lyon uh, forwards to really get their hands on Roman Briat. And then afterwards, uh, a little bit of a uh, back chat. A little bit of hands to face. You can see the closing off. Alo Emil again, it's pinged. It's Besanti here, the hand goes across the face. A four on his back. Felix Lombi. He was told in no uncertain terms to stop that straight away. Line out one by Leon. Coyote Dusan, left foot. Players chasing, Hamdawi hit very hard. Got to watch out, you've got the big boys coming up. Veradamu, Nakataki. Got a lot of strength, a lot of pace in that back line, Leon. Made safe once again, seven minutes in, still no points on the scoreboard. Artya Kovila. Over the top, there's a little bit of space, but it's been tidied up. Dumortier really perfectly positioned. Toby Arnold flipped like a French crepe. And Leon, quite happy passing the ball around. It's Nekitaki just getting the ball into, dropping it into the hands of Felix Lombe, French international. That's a knock on. Well, it's been uh, pinched back, so nothing. Oh, Makalu just manhandling Dusan. It's ridiculous. His brute strength is just, well, out of this world. We haven't seen Bamba with a carry. Here he is. Another French international. Really impressive, impressive defensive hits from Stade Francais. So, Mr. Paul Gustard will be looking on 
from the touchline. Very impressed with the work that he's got through in his first season in France. It's another big hit, that is. Nakataki just uh, making sure that Hamdawi doesn't start to uh, click into gear. Charge coming through this time from Pesenti, one of the biggest blokes on the pitch who really doesn't make inroads. Some strong physical uh, blocking taking place in the middle of the pitch, uh, Johnny. It's pretty impressive. The impacts have been phenomenal so far. There's another one, Mika Evaldi following through, three-man tackle. Coelho gets the ball out. <laughs> Big charge coming through from Seb Tofifunua. Coelho again, Dusan just arcing around the, the outside. Gets caught up himself by Alo Emil. Moses this time, the younger brother. Felix Lombi. What is going on? There's like a, it's all about blitz hitting in the midfield at the moment. Nothing is moving, nothing is shifting apart from the ground. It's like plate tectonics. Coyo's big kick. That is another perfect take, but just look at, he's carried back a few meters there, Maham Dawi. This time Coville goes a little bit deep. Barry with the kick. Straight down the throat of the pitch, picked up by Dumortier. Responds with something very similar. Hamdawi oh. finds a lot of space out wide. And this is a great run, perfectly done. Dakawanga, oh, it's absolutely delightful. Into the basket, and Alatia Koville finishes it off. The space that was found out on the right. Good work from Dakawanga, and then Koville supplies the support. And there you have it, Paris open up with a five-point score here in the tenth minute. Remarkable. And Leon just got the kick chase all wrong. Leaving Tau Fanu out there on the left wing to defend against the fullback. Never a good idea. You can just see nobody filtering on the right-hand side of the field. It looks like eight with his back. He's injured as well. But once you've got a 15-on-1 in the backfield, absolutely impossible for Nakatasi. The step back in field by Dakawanga is good. And the offload absolutely perfect to find Archer Coville. And from nothing, one decent counter-attack from backfield. And Stade Francais take the lead in this game. Gonzo, Gonzo, Cazada, happy man. Uh, seeing the first point scored, it's taken a bit of time just to prize open that defence. But Hamdawi's vision, just to see what was not happening over on that left side of the field, basically was uh, how this was scored. Uh, he saw there were mismatches, he saw there was acres of space, and then afterwards, well, you've got a couple of players who know how to, well, just make beautiful lines on the pitch. Now nah, the offload, absolutely phenomenal. Again, it's that man, Hamdawi. He's been hammered by the first three high balls. That's the first one he's got with a bit of ball, time in hand. He spotted the big, big loose head hanging out on the wing, targeted him, wonderful piece of play. Perfectly taken by Batis Pesenti. Former Poe and Rassing man. Artia Coville, the uh, world champion in the under-20s team. A few years ago now, originally from uh, Britannia, from uh, Van, of course. Van playing in the semi-finals of the Pro D2, could be going up, you never know. They've got a difficult trip to play uh, Oyen our way, but... And he's headed there next season as well, so That's it could right. be potentially in the top 14 with Van or in Pro D2. Well, Stefan Gla, there we go. There's uh, <laughs> Fiol, there's some very familiar faces, and uh, Pierre Abadin works with the uh, with the French, uh, the mayor of France, of course. The the Ville de Paris. And we'll have a, a very important uh, role to play with the Olympics coming to Paris next year. And a certain competition that's taking place in September on French soil as well. That we're all pretty excited about.
Big drive there coming from the New Zealander. He's only 22 years of age, Liam, Liam Allen. Big guy as well. And Kataki gets the ball into the hands of Thibaut, of um, Alex Sarat. Uh, Thibaut Regard, sorry. Baptiste Coyo, Leon, getting a bit of possession here is Dusan. Dusan realizes that the umbilical cord was cut, and uh, that's great work at the breakdown. How about that? Paul Gabriag does the business. He leads by example, Johnny, the captain of the Stade Francais team. A big turnover from the skipper. You could just see as well the out to win defence from Stade Francais. They don't do that often, but Paul Gustard's got them working at some points. They're coming out, forcing du Jean-Marc Dussan to come back against the grain. Low chop tackle again on the deck. He's a big man, but to get down there and contest, he does really well. And that's a momentum swing as well. Leon starting to work their way through phases, a bit of momentum. And that one stops them in their tracks. Lovely piece of defensive play. Julian Puricelli. And uh, working with uh, Kendrick Lynn of New Zealand. Did he best as well, yes, strong right. technician. And the presidents of uh, both of these teams here. Jan Ruber and uh, Hans Peter Wild. Here we go, this is a good uh, driving ball, a little bit rough around the seams, but it doesn't really matter if you're moving forward. Oh, that was nearly nicely uh, pitched. Oh. oh, that's a massive hit, isn't it? A reverse hit on Dusan, and he basically slams him down to the ground. Verdamu doing really well. Oh, that's going to be a knock-on off the body of Nakataki. He wasn't really ready for that. You can see the communication just a little bit off on that moment. What about the hit from Arate? Boof! Take that, Dusan. Incredible. It's textbook, isn't it? Ah, oh, it's perfect. You could tell as well he was annoyed. His grubber came to nothing. Completely missed time, but what about the connection? Yeah, if you go down horizontal, that's exactly what you want from your defensive player. Joshua Tuisova, he's the man that we wanted to see on the pitch of the stand. Uh, the smiling assassin, an absolute colossal rugby player um, who, I mean, we'll, we'll see. And I'm sure that he's got to be in the Fijian team come, you know, uh, September in the Rugby World Cup here in France. Got to be. And how excited are we going to see him? Koyo does really well, and that is fantastic disruption play there. And, uh, well, he really has sacked Archer Coville. Came around and did exactly what a good number nine should do. Pressurizing at the base a little bit. Oh, it's kind of poor from McAlew and, Co and Coville. You want a little bit better from your eight and nine. You don't want McAlew to be picking the ball up blindly and handing it to his scrum half. Sticking his scrum half under all sorts of pressure. And as you mentioned, Baptiste Kouyou coming around. Very simply sticking on pressure, forcing the turnover. Worrying signs as well, the scrum. Leon scrum starting to turn the screw. Stade Francais were on the back foot. That type of scenario, you just want your nine to drop into the pocket, through the legs from the number eight, Makalu, get away from danger. Off the back, he goes out and look at this, head down it and catches the winds. It's a nice bit of, uh, oh, I wasn't, well, you know, you know, his argument, the 22 year old, is he wasn't held. Now let's see, he's swatted down, it's taken quickly. Makalu, watch out for Makalu, it's just taken over. Well, um, Dumotier grounds the ball, did he take it over the try line? And if he does, it's a scrum five. I think he was just over. They, he might be a little bit lucky. <laughs> There's Coville, wants to get the better of this. Over the top it goes. Bounce wasn't kind, otherwise three players would be charging that. Interesting option from Coville as well. He expected of his skipper, Gabriag, had had his chance to get his mitts on the ball. He'd have taken that, calmed that down and asked for the three points. Very lucky, just before the line 
So that's why we've got a kick out from underneath the posts and a drop goal. No, here's Barry going to go on a sneaky little run. He gets caught up. Uh, he meets a certain Becca Saganadze, known for his wrestling skills back in Georgia, hence the reason why he has not made inroads. Gabri Ag goes deep. Barry this time. Taken forward by Hiragoyen. Nicely done, Barry, Barry, Hamdawi, they're queuing up. Now this is well played, Alex Arate out to Dakawanga. Dakawanga chicks it through, and that's grounded there by Allen, and that will be a scrum. He took it back over, is the call by the referee on this occasion. Yeah, really decent work by the back row, making up for his earlier error. Stad Francais a really good work on the defensive edge as well, creating space with the extra man. Taking the ball to the game line, almost leaguey plays, pulling out the back, forcing the Lyon defensive line to bite, and you can see the worry on Xavier Garbajosa's face. But great cover by Liam Allen. Work great to get back, save his team. Pressure is on. Jeremy Ward, South African, five tries this season, and getting a lot of game time. Finding his place in the squad, adding a variety to their attacking styles. Coville. Now to see if uh, Makalu comes off the back. Now this time it's uh, straight into the hands of Dakawanga. The Fijian hit back. Great strong defensive hit coming in. Coville will get that out. The big men go on a charge. Pesenti this time. Hits a Leon Wall. Alou Emil Ivaldi. Paul Alou Emil once again. This time it's Briat making inroads. Just a few meters out now. They go a little bit deeper. Go high over the top. Oh, that so nearly an interception from Toby Arnold. You've got to be careful with that man. And that will be a scrum. And uh, for Stade Francais. But so close. So, so close. High risk from Stade Francais. Gonzalo Casada asking for the same. Again, the forwards doing some real damage. The pick and go, breaking tackles, and working the way through the heart of the Leon defensive line. And this was a ball, a big long pass to Chuck. Men on the outside, but when you've got a man of Arnold's pace coming up off the try line, <sighs> nearly gets two hands to that as well. Kind of looking like it was would have been a better option just to sort of you know just to chip into the corner because the uh, it's there always was space. it's always a it's the last option is a big jump pass it, as soon as you put air on the ball like that and you don't know what the defensive line is doing you're asking for trouble either keeping the ball simple hands keeping the ball going forward but the last thing you want to do is chuck massive air on the ball Whoa, another mistake at the base from Makalu just gets caught up on his second rower's feet. I was going to say, unless your name's Finn Russell. <laughs> but even some of his, you know, high looping passes over the top, sometimes, you know, it doesn't fall. But we'll give him the benefit of the doubt because when it does happen, it's perfect. Um, <laughs> loss of possession, that's all that matters in this occasion. Monsieur Mabu will uh, give the ball back to Lyon. They breathe a sigh of relief once again. Player receiving a bit of treatment there. And it looks like it might be a Valdi. I look back at the first and only try so far. Great step off his right to beat Arnold as well, who's a decent defender in the backfield. Terrific support line from the youngster. They'll be heading to Van at the end of the year. It's been a decent start. First. 20 minutes that Stade Francais will be happy with a couple of errors, but the game has all been played in the right area as far as they're concerned. Leon with little or no ball. And these are the Leon players that are injured. Garachi, uh, who picked up a sprained ankle. Tofua, Guzu, Bota, William, Berder, of course, we talked about him. Godwin, Maraku, Mino, Nini, Ashvili, the Georgian, Coltman, Kabash. Uh, there's some big, big casualties. Big players that are missing out. And... Uh, Garbajosa will be hoping that, well, he gets them back as they battle for one of those playoff spots. Um, 
plus grand, ça fait deux fois, j'ai vu. Stade Français, line out. Ivaldi walks over to take this. 22 and a half minutes in and just seven points on the, on the scoreboard. Perfect night to watch a game of rugby in the French capital. Comes out, here we go with Barry. Is uh, Arat into the hands of that man, Presenti. Going back again, that's uh, nicely done. Ward working well, good fast hands. This is brilliant running, look at that. That is outrageously good from Meg Dude. Meg Dude, and it's gonna be finished off by Barry. Marvelous stuff. How he managed to just, well, just untangle himself from the Leon defense. Quite astonishing, a fine finish. And we've got a second try here in front of their home public. Terrific stuff, and they've threatened time and time again. Every time they've touched the ball, but what about the ability to break a tackle from the youngster, McDood? Taking the ball to the line again, it's Jeremy Ward. Creates the three on two on the outside. The tackle has slipped and the damage is done. Once you're in backfield, the offload's away. The step off is right again by Leo Barry. Absolutely superb. And it's a wonder to think as well. Gonzalo Quesada is marching orders at the end of the season, but some of the quality from this back line, the detail, the level of precision, they make it so hard for the defence line to get a man on ball, to get a proper tackle and get them on the deck. Stefan Gla, Jerome Fio, they look on in the stands, they approve. Just so impressive, Nadia Megdoud. He dealt with five defenders, and not just any defenders. The, the Fijian contingent, basically, you know, all of them queuing up down the left-hand side. How you managed to do that is just pretty impressive. Uh, it, it's just outrageously good. Uh, you've got even Toby Arnold. You've also got Liam Allen down there. And, you know, afterwards, Barry there just uh, trotting off to score his third season, uh, third uh, try this season. Um, quite brilliant. And the beauty is in the detail, how that's curated, a training ground move really. Second phase attack, Jeremy Ward taking the ball to the gain line, pulling it out of the back of his pod, creating that three onto you, allowing the half break. Really smart play by Stade Francais. Just trying to show off in front of uh, some of the uh, some of the veterans, Morgan Parra, would like to see him come back on, one of the injured players. Kramer, another one who picked up with an injury against Clermont last weekend. Uh, Del Bui as well, Etienne, tri-scoring machine, also injured. Nivalu, Tui, Veyanu, there's Kramer there. Castets, Abramishvili, and uh, Timani. So all of these uh, quality players, crikey. Um, it's just as well he's not on the pitch. The Leon forwards would have their hands full with that Argentinian um, hard man. He is uh, more than a handful. And he's heading to Clermont to join Christoph Furios at the end of the season. At the end of this year as well, Morgan Parra hangs up his boots, joined the staff at Stade Francais. He'll be their newest coaching addition. I think he's only heading off there just because the weather's a little bit harder in the winter. <laughs> Fourteen points to zero, Leon. Finding, finding it difficult to. Uh, oh, oh. hesitation there. Now, Arnold and Dumortier need to understand exactly who's doing what because, well, you make the call, you go for it, but you make the decision, and no one made a decision there. Dumortier hesitant. Toby Arnold finally saying. What's going on here? Oh, just a complete lack of communication. You can see they both expect the other to take the ball. You just need a clear call of mine. Or J, as we're in France. But in the end, looking at each other, a little bit desperate. <laughs> Offside call there. As you can see there, Yanis Chakouse just trying to uh, get it moving as quickly as possible. Jean-Marc Doussaint will try and uh, just uh, send it down into, in, into, uh, into their opponent's territory. And, you know, take their time to get down there, but also prepare themselves 
for a, for a set piece play that they can actually get to work properly because at the moment, uh, a bit flustered, decision making not great. And, uh, and we know what Leon are capable of, but as soon as they get the confidence, they're very, very dangerous. But at the moment, it's just up and down. First two all got to win the line out. Dylan Cretton doesn't win the line out, and that means that it's going to be problematic. Stade Francais pick it up with Makalu. Makalu stays on his feet until he's been brought down by pretty much 15 players. That's more disappointment for Leon. That was a real opportunity to take a breath, get down in the right area of the field, a chance to hold on to ball and attack, looking over the shoulder of Xavier Garbajosa. There was a player revolt this week. They all went to see the president and said they needed to remove Xavier Garbajosa from post. They are not happy with their head coach. And an opening 30 that hasn't gone well for them, Robbie. No, it's not been ideal, but uh, you know, that's sometimes statements can be made on the pitch by the players, you know, in their own way, and uh, you can't really revolt. You know, with a, with a strike, they're not going to strike on the pitch tonight, Johnny, anyway. We'll, we'll see the Leon players that are really looking to try and get themselves the right result. Chuck say got his hands on that. Oh, that's a turnover. Very well pinched, very well jackaled from the, the hooker. Here they go. Oh, oh, interception time. And here we go. It's that man once again. Jeremy Ward with his sixth try this season. The South African a sniper. Saw it coming, took it glided through to make it three tries for Stade Francais and the Parisians are very much rocking in their own backyard. And the fans absolutely love it. And rightly so, a big gamble from Jeremy Ward. Xavier Garbajosa looks on absolute dejection. But the turnover initially on the deck by Chacosé is decent. And as all coaches ask for, two passes, shift the ball to space. Dusan again, but the spot blitz on the outside. Jeremy Ward, fantastically read. And that is hard to digest if you're Leon. Jean-Marc Dusan trying to do the right thing. But a great read by the South African. Thing is that, uh, you know, they haven't got Leo. Berger, who really is the, the number one fly half. And he's the player who basically orchestrates and pulls the strings uh, for Leon, working very well with Coyo. Um, Jean-Marc Dusan comes off the bench quite often. Uh, when he comes off the bench, you know, he's uh, expected to produce the miracles, but you've also got, you know, because he's a bit of a veteran player now um, and he's been around the block, uh, you, you expect him to be you know, take advantage of the fatigue that's actually in there. Well, there's a little bit of trash talk there from Arate with uh, Dusan. He knows that that is not ideal. Uh, so, yeah, he'll be hurting from that, but uh, I think he'll, he'll hit back in his own way. Dusan sends it up in the air. Taken well by Stade Francais. 30 minutes in, 21 points to zero. And one-way traffic. Sans unique. Coville kicks it high. Now, a bit of possession. Toby Arnold sneaks around Alex Arati. Oh, that's well played by uh, Dusan. They really have uh, picked him up and, uh, and, and spotted him as maybe a, a potential weak link. There's Tofa Finu, a nice little spiral into his brother's hands. And uh, he hits the deck. Some of the big players in this squad, you know, French internationals, they've got to stand up, Johnny. Bamba's one of them. The Tofa Finua brothers have got to really hit hard. And you've also got to rely on the likes of Cretan, French international, Lambi as well. These are the players that really need to, to provide his uh, the team with, with, some, with some quality clinical rugby. Because otherwise they're just going to get they're going to get butchered here. Well, the minute they're being steamrolled, they're being outfought, they're being outthought. They haven't had their hands on the ball at all. This is a real opportunity now. Opposition 22 as a forward pack. Simplify. Can you maul? Can you create some sort of breakout? Can you pressurize Stade Francais, get them on the back foot? 
because 21-0 down after 32 minutes, it's not looking good. You have to take things into your own hands and find some solutions. Stamaba just getting the numbers right in this line-out before. It's sent in by Chakrusse. Got to get this line-out right. Critan's normally the target man. It's not going up and it's lost again. It's shambolic and it's been uh, turned over and won by the Pink Army who have their possession in their own 22. And a little bit of protection here before Coville sends it spiralling up field. And away from the danger zone of the 22. Oh, terrific clearance kick as well. By Coville, the man will be playing at Van next year. The first part by Seku Makalu. Pre-called in blocks, getting up and contesting well in front of Felix Lambi. Another man that will have a pre-season with the French national squad should be part of the wider squad for the prep. And Julian Puricelli will be absolutely livid because he hasn't seen a, 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 a line-out that's been won by his team, an attacking line-out in the Stade Francais half in 33 and a half minutes to play. And that is demoralizing. Uh, they got one of the halfway line, got to get it right. Lambie does the business. He's brought back down to earth by the Parisian forwards. Coyo, Chakrasi. Strong hits coming in. Gabriag defensively in position. Nicely done. Kind of. Cretan, Cretan around the outside. Sneaks around Makalu. Coyo gets the ball out. Tofa Fenua. Give it to the big man. Makalu wants to try and get his hands on it. Ah, uh, the, the ruck's been formed, I think. Oh, I know he's coming in from the, around the side, taken quickly. This is better from Leon. If they can make inroads, is Tofa Fenua. He's off his feet, so he can't challenge for that. Lambe, Lambe sees a, a little bit of an opening, a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. As Coyo gets the ball out, Dusan, that's quick. Saganadze, Saganadze, he's isolated. Needs a bit of support now. To the 22. Leon in a better position. Demba Bamba, he's big and he's burly, but he doesn't make any inroads. Here's uh, Nakataki. Liam Allen, he won't sort of uh, hold up and stop moving forward. The Pistons get going. Koyo, Koyo, this is much better. Thibaut Rigard this time. Good strong defensive play. Dakawanga trying to get his hands on the ball and unsuccessfully. Liam Allen this time. Still making inroads, it's looking better. They're holding on to the possession, which is a, a better situation. Massive hit on Demba Bamba. And now they got a chance to try and do something. Picked up by Nakataki. The Stade Francais defense coming up very quickly, hitting hard, making sure that Bamba can't make inroads. Wonderful counter again by Stade Francais defensively, getting through their work. Line speed time and time again pressurizing Leon and forcing them backwards. But lo look at this, Toby Arnold, you make a break and there's a scenario. That comes out oh. back in defense. How on earth did he get his hands on that? Hamdawi kicks it up. They chase, there's numbers, four, five, five Stade Francais players. Who's going to pick it up? One of them's going to go. Oh, of course, it's going to be Coville. How about that? Well, they attack in packs and the, the French Parisians doing extremely well. That's 26 points to zero. Two tries now for Coville tonight. The number nine on fire and Paris dominant here at Jean Boin. A further heartbreak for Lyon, absolutely incredible. A two on one is the skipper. Toby Arnold makes the break. The damage is done, a two on one with a scrum half on the outside, but Hamdawi gets himself in between the two and after the turnover, lifts his head, sees nobody in backfield. And five, any single one of those five pink jerseys could have scored that try. That's the drive, that's the determination to get into the quarterfinals. And it's Coville that finishes. Phenomenal stuff. An absolute de dejection for Leon. This is quite shocking, isn't it? This uh, score line. Uh, we always knew that it was going to be complicated for uh, Lyon up here in Paris. But 26 points to zero and uh, every single moment of, of possession in attack has ended with points scored by Stade Francais at the other end. 
incredibly, Leon won here six weeks ago. I mean, that, that's the crazy situation we're in. That Leon won here six weeks ago. They lost four on the bounce since then. They're just back on winning track last weekend against Perpignan. They've got mutiny in the camp. They want Garbajosa out as head coach. But this game, I'm not sure if that just encapsulates everything that's happening in the club right now. 30 plus points on the scoreboard before half time. Absolutely incredible scenes. Well, there's a lot of, uh, still a lot of rugby to be played. We've seen tales of two halves <laughs> this season in uh, not just in the top capitals, but also in Europe. And I'm just wondering whether or not Leon, well, get, they get the hairdryer effect and it has a, a positive knock-on effect. I don't know, I, I really don't know. Fact is that, well, there's so much, there's so many scenarios uh, that could take place. Joshua Tuasova, not come on. We've got uh, the likes of Sopoaga, we've got Polisi, we've got Sobela, Mayanavu. I mean, but here they go again, trying to find a way, probing still. And then all of a sudden, you can see what Stade Francais do. They jackal the ball, they put players in at the breakdown, and they rip. And they've got numerous players who are queuing up to try and do that against one of the top try scorers in this league. And trying, still trying hard, but ultimately getting away from his support, taking that extra role as well. But if you're Xavier Garbajosa now, you have to look at your bench. Gomez Codela, Patrick Sobella, Jonathan Pelissier, Sopawanga, and Josh Tuisova. They have to come on now. 28 0 at half time. I'm not sure the hairdryer effect is enough. They have to change personnel if they want to affect this game. Second best in every facet so far. Ivaldi, Stade Francais, on the edge of the 22, is picked up by Briat, and uh, Alo Emil gets the ball out, and finally it's Makalu, he's still going, still going strong, Arat with a bit of support, Koval goes digging for the ball, it comes out, it's not, it doesn't go to Pacenti, uh, but it does go back into the hands of that man, Gariak, Hamdawi, tries to turn, hit by Saganadze, another charge from Gabriag and Koval digs. Barry! Oh my word, that is sumptuous. He gets the gets rid of defenders with a little act of wizardry. McDude around the outside, still going. Big hit coming in. And taken out there by Thibaut Rigard, strong defensive player. Is that a turnover ball? I don't think so because McAloo's there. McAloo! Oh, he gets stripped. And that might be a scrum for Leon or it's just going to be the end of the half, of course. And I think they'll just want to get rid of this. This is logically the end. Koyo gets rid of the damage, damage limitation. And how about that for a first half for Stade Francais? And there's some tired legs there at the moment, but uh, very sharp brains. But for this Lyon team, they've got a mountain to climb if they want to try and hit back against Stade Francais, because that was very much cross-town traffic one-way traffic, traffic that has basically taken out 15 players. And it's cruel. Yeah, things, things are working out. We're playing the right decisions. Uh, if we're not making errors, and uh, we can't make errors, otherwise, uh, you know, we'll be paid for it. So, just have to be meticulous. Well, Artya Koville, that was um, obviously his reaction. Um, just remain clinical. Uh, we're not going to get a player from Lyon because they've all gone straight into the change rooms and basically they'll be listening or, or just talking amongst themselves to try and find solutions for what they've seen. Koville, Barry, Ward, three tries. Koville with a brace. Barry kicking well, 28 points to zero. I mean, there's nothing much to talk about, Johnny, apart from the one-way traffic for Paris. Well, no, look, I think the fact that a Lyon player failed to show up for half-time chat with the staff halftime is, is very telling in itself complete one-way traffic humiliation for Leon and that they were second in absolutely every area of that first half 
and they have to change something, everything at halftime. Otherwise, this could be 50, 60 points. Well, will we have a revolution in the second half? You have to wait and see. We'll be back in a few minutes. Johnny Beatty and myself, Robbie Knox. Don't go away. Uh, Leon, will, are they the Wolves? Will they come back in a pack? Pink, and they're having an absolute blast here. They need to control some ball. Simply, in the first half, they didn't control any of it. There's a man that can help. Lima Sopowanga. Terrific conductor. Hasn't had much game time this season, but a phenomenal rugby player. Yeah, Jean-Marc Doucin logically has uh, been taken off, I think. Uh, we'll get confirmation of that in a minute. Um, his final pass that was intercepted. There we go. Confirmation. And uh, so Sopowanga just playing in that outside half position. And two us over on for Nakataki. Uh, that probably makes sense as well. So two big guns coming on to try and bolster this team as the clearance kick goes into uh, touch and we've got a line out first things first Leon can they win their own line out because we saw that Dylan Cretan and co didn't manage to do it you've got French international line out um, specialists in Lambe and Cretan working underneath Julian Puricelli who knows a little bit about line outs here we go test number one They can tick that box, uncontested, Cretan does well. Sapoanga gets the ball into the hands, of course, of uh, uh, Veradamu. Here we go, a little bit of an option here, little kick through. No, I don't know why, I think we thought that he was in an offside position there, Sapoanga. And uh, Liam Allen goes chasing around to try and find that man, Meg Dude. He's a wily character, isn't he? Slalling himself around some of those Leon players and just gets himself outside of the 22. Moses Alo Emil, one of the two Samoan brothers, born in Australia. Coville's kick. Well, the first one minute 45 has been positive, uh, Johnny, for Leon. Uh, but there's the, uh, the very bleak expression on the face of Jean-Marc Doucin, who knows that he's been benched because well, he's just not firing. Change can be positive, Johnny, sometimes. Another line out. Won the last. And it's been uh, taken there by Cretin. Uncontested by Stade Francais. And picked up by that man, Chacoussé. Baptiste Coyo. Quick, quick attacking line coming up. And that's been picked up there. He's really everywhere, isn't he, Jeremy Ward? And there is a knock on, so uh, they have possession. Picked up by Gabriag. Sakanadze doing really well with the defensive hit. Bit of uh, help there from... No, you can't do that. Bit of help from Felix Lambie. Picked up by Toby Arnold. Oh, he's running into a few issues there. Called the French, the Parisian forwards. Kick over the top. Sneaky. A little bit unlucky with the bounce. And there's a pair of knock-ons there. But uh, he's a player that really needs to stand out as well. Etan Dumortier, uh, um, very much on the radar for Fabian Galtier, 22 years of age, but uh, his morale is very low. Things haven't been working for him tonight, and he knows it, but all it needs is a little trigger, something a little bit positive, and then afterwards, you know, these guys, they just come to life, and then everything clicks into place. He just needs something to click inside of him. In the, the Leon side haven't held on to any ball. You just saw the last starter play. Joshua Tusova taking the ball to line, a bit of a mix up in terms of lines and communication with Saganadze and the ball goes straight to deck on first phase. So for wingers to come into the game, yes, you have effort plays like kick chases and different ways to sprint and get yourself back into action, but he needs his three quarter line and inside him to function from to flourish. Might be a bit of foul play to look at, Robbie. The TMO has been called. Yeah, we're just gonna find out what happened there, just in the, uh, in, and they, uh, you know, it's another thing that we need to look out for. Voilà. Le deux, boom. Oh, yeah, well, it was uh, Michele Valdi didn't wrap. There might be a penalty. Okay. 
dans le bois Est-ce qu'il faudrait pour moi si on contacte avec la tête Non, oh. il avait l'épaule. Non, c'est épaule, épaule, ouais. no, head on head. They're saying shoulder against shoulder, but look at Ivaldi's head. It goes straight on, uh, on his head. Look at the head of... Uh, okay. Okay. Ivaldi on the head, do you get a yellow card for this? Or worse, potentially. Coming from distance. It's just giving a penalty. I can't believe they're saying that there's no contact with the head. Just the shoulder. Um, I can't believe he it. He said he didn't touch the head. Incredible. Did he? Yes, he's been around, isn't he? Working uh, with Stade Francais now. Oh, did he hear Kazadeh? Of course, <laughs> getting it wrong. Um, that's quite um, strange, isn't it? That decision, incredible. And that could have been a good, a big turning point if that was a card for Stad Francais, but the fact that it hasn't been picked up after being referred to the TMO, incredible. That's nicely done. Demortier, Demortier goes around the outside. Excellent work in the line-out. Finally actually functions. The ball comes out. Liam Allen this time. 22-year-old Kiwi going on a bit of a charge. This is a lot better. Tofa, uh, there's a charge. Tofa Fenua goes over. Oh, no, he hasn't got the ball in his hands. How did he not that get... How did he not pick it up? That's unbelievable. He thought it was thin air. Quite remarkable. You know, someone stopped him from taking that, <laughs> Johnny. Quite how that's been thieved. Now, was that out? Is that a try? A big Roman, Taufanua. He's been sniffing for these all game. Hey, let's take a look at this. That might have been out. If that was out, that's a try. Okay. If the ruck was finished, if the ruck was, uh, if the ball was out, basically, he's saying, then that's okay. Look, hands on the ball. Uh, nobody's bound to the ruck. You can see the front two men, Gabriel yeah, and Alonio. Yeah, they're not connected, right? Nobody's connected by their shoulders. That's a try. Yeah, nobody's bound to that rock. He's absolutely well within his rights to come around and take that ball. That's absolutely spot on. It's exactly that. And it's it's fragmented. Look, you can just see that uh, Moses Aloumil is not holding on to his brother for one point. Gabriak is on the other side. And uh, it's just, they're playing as if it's out, right? A very good opportunist play. Try it is. And the try has been given. Fantastic for Roman Tofa Fenua. An opportunist try for Leon that's given them a breath of fresh air since the start of the second half. New players coming on, and Roman Tofa Fenua spotting that the ball was actually out, uh, that the ruck was uh, not formed, it would be uh, come to an end. And that, well, has given them seven points. Johnny. And might that be the shot in the arm that they needed? Again, a starter play that works. Simply hold on to ball over the gain line and you start to apply pressure. That's the beauty. And here's the brains by big Roman Tau Fenua. That ball is clearly out. The pink shoulders are not bound. Smart play by the big man. Now, these changes, can they kick up a stink? Can it create some tremors and shake up this Leon team and give them the belief that they can actually, you know, hunt as a pack, work together, but more importantly, not make small errors as they move forward? As the younger brother, Kuyu, on the left in black, plays for Beeritz. Barnaby, 25, uh, 23 years of age. Uh, pretty nifty as well. Now, line out again with uh, Ivaldi. 
Uh, just look at Romanto for Funua. Got to work harder. That collapses. That might be a, a scrum. No, it's safe. It's uh, the ball's there for Stade Francais, unless they can stop it from coming out. Leon, you can see that they're, uh, they've, they've decided to fight a little bit more here, Johnny, and it's, uh, it's better from Leon. There you go, a little bit of counter-racking. Good work there coming in from Sebastian Toe for Funua. You've got to upset the apple cart. And uh, Stade Francais have had it in their own way in the first half. Got to turn things around, but they've got a good possession here. Watch out for that man, Ward. And, uh, well, that was just clumsy, wasn't it, from... Uh, you've got to be careful. Thibaut Regard, Regard at fault. And a Coville going around the outside. What options has he got? Ball comes out to Makalu. Makalu, well, he goes down very quickly. Great tackle there from Sopoanga. Coville. Barry. Got to fight at the ruck. You've got to try and win those, those battles in the rucks. Uh, Gabriag going forward like a human. Oh, that's brilliant play. McDougue, you've got to bring him down. Liam Allen's making sure that he doesn't wriggle out of his grasp on this occasion. Stade Francais. Oh, that's just got knocked forward. It will be a scrum. Well, shenanigans. A little bit of pushing and shoving. There's frustration, you know. I think Lyon are a team that are extremely frustrated. And uh, Stade Francais can most definitely provoke them and tease them and mock them to the point where discipline could just go haywire. There's another fa famous face, uh, David Oradou. His son Hugo as well. That section Paloise, terrific young prospect again. The tackle breaks. Another prospect that many people won't know back home, Nadir Megdoud, but he's been breaking tackles all game. Again, the big pass to space just cut out by Kuyu. A little bit more fragmented in the second period by Stade Francais. Peter de Villiers as well. South African played for France for a number of years. Now with the Scottish coaching team, scrum coach with the Scottish national side. All right, and he just lives up the road um, from uh, Jean Boin. You often see him in the street just doing in the 16th hour on Simon. Children are uh, in school, of course, uh, in the area. Stade Francais kicking into the corner. Great to see all of these familiar faces, you know, from yesteryear. Nadia uh, McMu, just so you know, is, uh, is a product from Massey. But he did spend a bit of time playing down at Brive at one point and played for Rouen before joining Stade Francais in last year. Tenth game and just uh, showing what he's capable of doing. Ten minutes into the second half. It's a little bit better. Ivaldi It's a little bit messy there. He's holding the ball on the ground, but there's players just falling off their feet and just stopping. You know, you can see the three players down on the ground, just preventing the, the attacking team to get in there and, and try and make that ball uh, keep it alive. Uh, the initial effort. Mole defence was fantastic. Big drive. It's just a counter-ruck. Mika Valdi goes to deck. Demba Bamba coming in over the ball. It's Liam Allen as well. Wants to go in and take space, but just loses his feet. Not a good picture to show the referee. Now Evaldi. Oh, taken perfectly there by Briat. The former Oriac player. Here they go. Let's see how well organized they are. See if the forwards are well, they've just uh, they caused a few issues here. The Leon forwards. And that doesn't like, like it's coming out. That's well done. And uh, once again, we see a scenario where it breaks off and you, you're following players, you think you've got the ball, but in fact, it's been held inside. Good work from the forwards to stop that from coming out. And they're showing good heart. That's it, it'd be very easy to down tools, but a break at halftime, a little word together, seven points to the good. But the forward pack as well, at mall time, filtering through, getting through some work. Getting hands on that ball, getting it to deck and forcing the turnover. Valdi makes way for Laurent Panis. 
player who's come through the academy as Stade Francais. Tutored under Remy Bonfils as he was uh, playing his final few years. Laurent Sempere as well. Long line of hookers who have who've done well at Stade Francais. Baptiste Coyo goes in, they get a penalty, just uh, going in at an angle once again. Uh, I just think, it, I think it's Moses Alou Emile just going in at an angle and it was... Well, just preventing it from being stable right from the very start as soon as the ball went in. And it's strange because it's the exact same scrum penalty that we saw in the first period. In the exact same area of the field, five metre line, no need to really come in at an angle, just stay square, pressurise, make it hard for them to exit. Another daft one to cough up. You can see Laurent Saint-Péry, Julien Arias, they don't agree with the decision. Looking on with the analyst. Well, there's a good chance. A little bit of a mismatch, but it's been picked out. That's excellent play. Two is over. Two is over. Gets the ball out. Thibaut Regard and the Stade Francais defence scrambling. Picked up by Liam Allen. Liam Allen still going. Doing really well. It's been picked up by Bo Coyo. Coyo. Surely this is going to finish off with a try. Oh, De Mottier doesn't take the pass. And that ball doesn't come out. And he's, he's got to get his... Uh, confidence back because he looks like he's in a different world altogether but that last pass oh, should have happened right and hard work was done chaos again ensuing lack of structure from a line out that was lost it was Demba Bamba with the follow-up work hacking on and pressurizing Stade Francais and just the final pass didn't stick otherwise a certain try for Lyon. God, what a mistake that is. And, you know, they, they've rattled Stade Francais to a certain extent. Makalu, uh, just by getting in the way there, he's given away a penalty. So now they've got a chance to try and do something here. Now, tap, or do they get a scrum going? No, it's going to be tapped, I think. There we go. Koyo, get moving. Give it to the big man. Roman Tofa Fenua this time. Koyo, surely this is going to finish with a try. Here's Sebastian Tofa Fenua. Does he ground the ball? It's been held up, I think. Needs to get the ball back. Koyo digs for it. There it is. It's been uh, made safe. Koyo gets the ball out. Can they crash it down and score the try? Two is over. That's going down, surely. Thibaut Rigard, right from close range, scores the second try. The Lyon comeback continues. This is quite extraordinary. Third season for the outside centre for this Lyon team. Wow, this is turning into something a little bit interesting now from the visitors. It's incredible. We've got a game on our hands as well. Lyon coming back into this encounter. From absolutely nowhere, no points in the first half. But little by Lurk working their way back in. Big, strong carries. Roman Taufafinua over the gain line. His brother Sebastian held up just short. But they recycle the ball. They're patient. The pick and go by the big outside centre is good. He dots the ball down. And Leon are back in this game. That's good persistence, isn't it? Perseverance there coming from that man Thibaut Regard. Very loyal to Leon. Just going over the top finally, but uh, realizing that uh, he really had to stand strong and make sure that that mattered. Sopoanga now with a chance to try and convert this. Two converted tries, and we're all square once again. Sopoanga lands that conversion. It's 28 points for Stade Francais, 14 for Lyon. Talked about a tale of two halves. And who would have seen it coming after the showing in the first half? What a turnaround for Lyon. 
Picked up by Allen. Coyo gets the ball out and uh, into the hands of Gomez Cadala. The uh, score against Perpignan last weekend and that victory. And there's the, the high kick, 41-31. Made it very complicated for themselves, but still held on to win. Stade Francais. Well, Moses Alo Emil hitting the deck. Fortuiko on for Sebastian Tofafunu. Oh, the spillage there from Hamdawi. Now they've rattled Stade Francais. And surely that's uh, going to be a scrum for Stad, uh, for Leon after that. That was that was a blatant knock on. A little bit of pressure on Stad Francais, especially if they concede another try. Fans not making too much noise. Nicely taken there by Toby Arnold. Batiscoyo, got to move quickly. There's Marchand. Guillaume Marchand, younger brother of Julien Marchand, the Toulousan. Did play 50 matches for Toulouse before he realised that the pecking order was, uh, well, looking quite long. Another clearance kick now. Hamdawi. Hamdawi. Leo Barre running into issues there. The, well, it's been ripped. Look at this. Just behind the referee. How on earth that happened, I don't know. Picked up by Thibaut Rigar. Good hit coming in there from uh, Hirigoyen. Sakanadze over the game line. And there's the kick. Looking for a 50 22. That is absolutely sublime. Oh my word. Incredible from Batis Coyo, picked his spot, nailed it, they get possession. They do, and what a swing. Questions to be asked though, the contact, Leo Barry looked like the ball was ripped on the floor. That's clearly ripped on the floor by Felix Lambie, but it's let go, and the 50-22 now tees up Leon to get themselves a scenario now, back within one score if they score quickly. And Moses Alomil making way for Kakovin. And uh, we've also got Azagoa coming onto the pitch. Here we go in, taking a breather. And Lombi making way for Mayana Vanua. Here they go with Joshua Tuasova. Refuses to go down. Leon on the attack. Liam Allen makes the ball available. Sapoanga, that's neatly done. Toby Arnold getting the ball out to Demortier. Trying to find that confidence that he's been lacking in the 59 minutes that we've played so far. Liam Allen again. Does well to stay on his feet for as long as possible. Batis Coyo. And that's a turnover ball. Didn't, thought he was just on the cusp of not holding his own weight, but the hands were on the ball, the jackals being made, turnover. And there's the clearance. Good kick as well, up towards the halfway line. Well, it looks like Batis Pazenti is going to be replaced by another big unit, the South African Van der Mest. Not the smallest of chaps. <laughs> JJ Van der Mest, who's an absolute unit. Probably now with Roman Taufifunua, the two biggest men on the field.
Uh, I think it's just, um, just making sure that they're wired properly just to uh, see if the communication's okay. I think we're okay now. And back on, 20 minutes to go. 14 points separate Lyon and Stade Francais. Cretan, nicely done. Sapuanga, there's the chip. Picked up by Thibaut Regard. Bit of contact in the air from Megduk, the Algerian international. Taken forward. And Sapuanga, you just can't smother a player on the ground. Smart play again by Sapuanga. Opting to mix up with the starter play, slowing the start front, say, line speed that we saw defensively was so effective in the first half. A simple thing like a chip, it just stops them, it checks them, it makes them think about what's happening behind them, slows them down a half yard. But Leon managed to regather the ball, they get a penalty from the ruck. Another chance to work themselves into this game. Smart play. I think it's Lauren Panis who's down with a bit of a sternum injury. And uh, we can see Paolo Odogu about to come on. The former Wasps player, Sale as well. A man that probably would have been capped by Eddie Jones if he hadn't been injured a couple of summers ago. Dual qualified, also qualifies for Italy. Tremendous athlete. Ripped up in the Premiership for a couple of seasons before sure. coming over to Paris. And Ward goes off. Try score from South Africa. Also looks after a clothing brand in his spare time with Jacob Umanga. Incredibly. As you do. Businessman as well. Cretan, nicely done. And look at this, they're moving forward. Need a bit of support here. Can they keep on moving? And if they can get the ball over, that might be a try. It's been held up a little bit easily. There's lots of space. Akinazi, the Georgian. And look at this. The comeback continues for Leon. And the Georgian open side flanker will not be stopped from such a short space to dot over and make it 28 19. Ha oh, ha ha. C'est magnifique. Grinding their way back into the game. The take is good by Cretan, and you can see the momentum once it comes on. So hard to stop. The initial effort grounded just before the line. Second Adzi spots a bit of space. Oh, it's a swinging arm as well from Arate. That's going to be looked at. But Leon very much in this game. Yeah, he's going to get yellow carded, and it's already happened. Arate goes off for that swinging arm around the neck of the, the Georgian wrestler. As Thomas Lombard, who was part of that team back in 2003, watches on, scratches his head. The team manager must be a little bit concerned at this recovery because there's still plenty of time for this to turn around and to move into uncharted territory. Sapoanga makes no mistakes from that range and it's game on 28 points to 21 and honestly this is turning into a very interesting thriller i mean what a story this would be 28 nil down at half time if leon go on to win the second half win the game and secure their spot in the top six with this manner of comeback well, would Jan Rubert ask Xavier Garbajosa to sign another two years to his contract? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but I mean, the fact that this has been turned around from a couple of uh, tactical changes, uh, which is very true because the Jean-Marc Dusan sapuanga change was pivotal. And they've got an extra man on the pitch for the next 10 minutes, so... Or nine. Batis Cuyo. as well to make that safe Gabriel tackled by Cretan we're at the halfway line gonna play the territory game here Coville nicely taken there by Dumortier 
makes the ball available. Batis Cuyo. Sakanadze. And again, they'll just be using their intelligence and in how they deal with this. The Alu Emil brothers. Watch on. Oh, two is over. Watch out. Watch out. Danger is about. The offload is fantastic. Sapoanga gets it into Thibaut Regard. He meets Leo Barre. It's been made safe. Down. Oh, it's Batis Coyo. Can he make it? Can he go all the way? Tries to get the ball back. It's in the hands of, oh. of Veradamu, but he just gets bumped into touch. That was so close. Lovely piece of play by Sopoanga. Heads up, knowing he's got a man advantage in the back line. Opting to play the ball to space. And again, the quality of Tuisova drawing in two men, getting the offload away. But the cover tackle to stop the play. There's the offload again. Beautiful piece of play. Sopawanga, two on one. But this coming across is Hamdawi. Boom, take that. Great cover, scrapping till the end. But what a game, Robbie. This is turning out to be <laughs> incredible stuff. Oh, they were so close. Hamdawi didn't have a choice in the matter. Take down Veradamu. You know, he's an outrageously talented player and uh, played 115 games for for the French Sevens team, of course, and uh, was a corporal in the Foreign Legion. Tavita Veradam, who's not a player you want to mess around with. On that occasion, Hamdawi absolutely nailed his tackle in such a big way that, uh, well, that could be a defining moment in how this landscape is finally painted at the end of the 80 minutes. Referee just getting uh, properly wired up, having uh, radio Issues there. Just give the players the time to just readdress themselves. This line out's going to be important for Stade Francais to make sure that they they uh, they 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 keep possession, clear <laughs> the lines as quickly as possible, because otherwise that's going to come down and we're going to be all square going into the final ten. It's just bizarre. Like, this game is almost a microcosm of both team seasons so far, in that they've been capable of the brilliant and the absolutely atrocious from game to game <laughs> in terms of consistency so up and down and we see a first half from Stade Francais utterly dominant 28 points to the good and now Leon storming back into this game it isn't consistent but it is entertaining it is absolutely crazy yeah it's it's so true and we're a stone's throw away from uh from Notre Dame, you know, the beauty and the beast, isn't it? It is. <laughs> We've seen uh, uh, the tale of two halves, the tale of what could, what's beautiful and what's uh, beastly. This is so much what, what, what that's about. And uh, where is this going? Where on earth is this going? The fact that they've also got a player in the bin because uh, Alex Arate is off until when? Until the 72nd minute. So, I mean, eight minutes after that, We'll find out exactly who will be bragging about this encounter. But I can tell you that Bayonne and Toulon will be watching with on the edges of their seats to find out exactly what's going to happen here because their season will be defined by what happens in the next 15 minutes. Stade Francais with Makalu. Makalu makes it safe. Look at this. Big shove. Big massive shove there from the Lyon pack. And they're under so much pressure. Coville wants some players. Uh, Van der Mesh is there, but he's you don't want to have him isolated. And look at what Cretan and Co are doing. Making it super complicated. If that doesn't come out, it will be a scrum for Leon. Wow. A fairly piece, a fairly naive piece of play, sorry, by Stade Francais. Getting caught up high on their own try line. Again, the dog from Leon. Working together, holding Van der Mest up, who is 135 kgs in his own right. There's a young man that's got through a power of work as well. Liam Allen coming off. Patrick Sobella replacing him, who's an absolute workhorse in his own right. One of the best athletes and back rowers in the top 14. 
Oh, and he's played for some of the nitty-gritty teams that have been super complicated to play against Oyuna when they were in the top cators. He was pr pretty much flying the flag for the team from Eastern France. And yes, yeah, super, super complicated to deal with. Uh, it's... This is, this is money time uh, in rugby, French rugby terms. Segons comes on for Barre. Segons getting himself fit to actually start uh, play, play out here. Segons not known for his defensive game though. His first duty is gonna be to defend that man who's gonna come straight down his channel. Stade Francais down a man in the back line. Arate in the bin. What can Leon conjure up? In red zone, a great chance to strike. Are the creative marvels of Lima Sapoang. We just know what he's capable of doing. Fantastic player and uh, a team player as well. So let's see what happens. Extra man on the pitch. Scrum in the Parisian 22. Keski Spass. Is it going to be the ooh -la, la moment for the boys from the Rhone Valley? Big shove. Batis Koyo tries to get it out, still going, makes it safe. Oh, Makalu, 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 the marvellous Makalu doing the business, but offside. The Parisian crowd do not like it. There are a few players who I'd give that ball to, I'd tap it and get moving. He wants to go for three, Garbajosa. <laughs> He's not getting what he wants. Go for three. Colville just coming offside. Allowing Kuyu the chance to snipe. But this now, an absolutely monstrous chance for Leon. Marshon. Oh, Cretan, he doesn't manage to make it safe. And it's been picked up there by Van der Mest. And Parisians live and breathe again. And the, the Garbajos are called for three, might have been the right decision. But the line has been working. A little bit of nerves maybe getting in the way. Coville slams it into the stands outside of the 22. They get a line out. Stade Francais breathe for now. A little bit of an overthrow, you can just see the timing. Cretan on his way down as that ball arrives, picked up by Van der Mescht. He wanted three points, he didn't get it. The clock ticking down on that yellow card. Stade Francais still with waves to defend. James Hall coming on for Covell, who's been outstanding. Here they go, Liam. Lima Sopoanga, ball comes out, it's a long pass, oh, it's been picked up by Dumortier. Uh, keeps hold of it, runs into a little bit of trouble. Needs to go down now so that they get the ball out. <laughs> Batiste Coyo. Made safe, here's Coyo again. Toby Arnold tries to make inroads. Good acceleration there from New Zealander from the Bay of Plenty. Plenty of zip, plenty of attacking prowess. Good charge this time coming from Mayana Vanu. Sopoanga still going. Briat brings him down. Cuyo, there's the opportunity. Early offload to uh, Dylan Cretan. Tries to make it available. It's been knocked out by Van der Mest. I think it's going to be a line out for Leon if it's spotted by the, li by the linesman. Oh, he's not in a good place, is he, uh, Dylan Cretin? Oh, he's made some impact since he's on the field to us over. But Leon just working their way through the phases, knowing they're a man up, holding on to ball, stretching Stade Francais defensively. To us over again, draws in two people, gets the offload away. Cretin down the short side, just looks like he twists his ankle. But beautiful work, the hitch kick, the ball out the back of the hand. Incredible work by the Fijian. Great cover D by Van der Mest as well. He has been incredible since he took the field. Yeah, that's a funny one. You didn't you don't start with him. But you bring him on for the second half. Whereas you could have started with him. So defensively, he doesn't really allow much to get past him. Offensively, 
He has, uh, well, he's, uh, he's a Fijian Swiss Army knife or whatever. That's a line out that's been won and made safe here by Leon. Ten minutes to go, still with an extra player on the pitch. That's a little bit high, that is for Makalu. Needs to be a bit careful, and he's still trying to get his hands on the ball. Made safe. Oh, two is over, look at that, he's turned the Parisian defence around and Batis Coyo gets it out. They got numbers, if he can get the oh. ball out, Sakanadze. Well, he had an option there, decided not to go for it, but they're still moving forward. Two players out wide, didn't go for it. Marchand gets side down quite quickly by the Parisian defence. Sopoanga, a little slip. And the referee says, let's get back over there. It's an offside. Yeah, just had to tip the ball on. Two men on his outside shoulder. What an opportunity that was. They'll have another one, though. You can hear from the touchline, Prantois, take the three, take the three. Garbajos as well, take the three points. And they're finally going to listen to their coach. <laughs> the fans don't like it, whichever fans they are. But uh, at the end of the day, listen, um, Leon get a point. They move to 61, right? Now, what does 61 points mean when Bayern have 58, three points behind? It doesn't really change anything. It still means it's all to play for next weekend. That's if Lyon don't win this game here, it's a straight-out knockout game next weekend between Bayon and Lyon in Lyon. But if Lyon win today, they tie everything up. Still within their hands, eight minutes to play. But if they come away from here with one point, it's a straight shootout next weekend at home against Bayon. So boring. important kick, this one. Two from two so far. And he hits it to the right, miss kicks the ball. And, uh, well, I don't think anybody can believe it, but uh, he rarely misses. And that's just, uh, that's how, how much tension is in the air at Jean Boin tonight. That's a let off, because you could tell they felt they should go to the corner. Stade Francais now back up to the full complement, back to 15. Demortier. Two is over, two is over. Oh, he's done it again. That little spin into the tackle into the, has been pretty effective uh, in the last couple of minutes for the Fijian Giants. Picks up, good opportunity here. Go the other way, Thibaut Regard still going. Makalu's going to try and jackal. Doesn't get the chance. Here's Batis Koyo. Here he is, trying to make the ball available. Makalu's got his hands on it, doesn't take it. An opportunity here, this time coming in from uh, Forteika. They go outside. Thibaut Ricard this time gets past his man. That's beautifully done. And taken forward by Veridamu. Six minutes remaining. Big charge this time coming from Maya Navanu. Still going. Everybody battling. Support play. Need to get back in a position. Now there's some tired legs out there, Johnny. And I think that's going to play its an important role. Thibaut Regard can't get the offload. Maklu tries to get his hands on it. Now they've got numbers. Now they've got opportunities. He's done well to keep the ball alive. Dumortier on the other side of the pitch this time. Quick ball is going to be key. Felix Lambe. It's not the uh, prettiest of passes, but it doesn't matter. Futuaka. Oh, Mayana Navanu. Gets the ball. Oh. Oh, that's it. That's the one. That's the pass. Veridamu. Oh, my word. Quite extraordinary. And Tavita Veradamu gets try number four for Leon, 28-26, with a chance to convert five minutes to go. This is absolutely bonkers. Absolute scenes. What a comeback from Leon. And again, given the pressure, the continuity. Sopawanga spots JJ van der Mesh flagging in the outside channels. And again, it's the interplay, the ability to offload, keep the ball live, and shift the point of contact. Big men as well moving forward. Last offload was an absolute beauty. And look at what's happening here. They could have been ahead if Sopawanga hadn't landed that three points, but we are 
in such an interesting scenario. We are all square with five minutes to go. Stade Francais leading 28 nil at half time, and now it's 28 all. I mean, what what kind of a scenario, you know, could you could you have, could you have asked for? The neutrals. Well, this is just wild, fantastic, incroyable. Here we go. Four minutes to go. Anybody's game! Oh. <laughs> Daka Wanga nearly snatched it out of the sky. And he's regretting every single moment of that because that was in the basket. Oh. Now, two points apiece. What does that mean? Stade Francais up to 66, level with Racing, same number of points. Lyon with 62, which means that Bayonne, well, they need to win with five points. That's all it comes down to. So that's it, a draw here would see Lyon sit in sixth place on 62 points, Bayonne 58 and Toulon 57, which would mean again... Finished for Toulon. Finished for Toulon, but the possibility of a straight shootout, Bayonne would have to win with a bonus point next weekend in Lyon. With Lyon currently sitting sixth, I mean, what a game. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, any points for Lyon tonight and Toulon's chances of getting themselves into the top six. They paid the price by, well, playing 21 GIFs, which is uh, the strict rules of the Ligue Nationale de Rugby. And they paid for it by losing heavily away to Racing up in La Havre. But this is turning into something quite extraordinary. Gonzalo Casada knows that they're in the playoffs, but how about this for a turnaround? I mean, wow. And now, three minutes to play, a poor clearance kick. You could see the reaction by Sapawanga. Not happy with the distance he got. For Stade Francais, a chance to nick this game with a mall, with a penalty, with a drop goal. What can they conjure up? Makalu makes it safe. They're getting the side winding over dangerously towards touch. And there he is, and that's a chance. They're going to knock him out. Oh, they got the advantage there. The hand's gone up. And they've got an advantage that they can play here. Big charge there coming in from Gabriel. Here we are with Stade Francais in the Lyon 22, but we'll go back. And it's just a collapsing them all. Obviously, you're going to go for the three points. <laughs> How much pressure is there? Well, to be honest with you, is th there's not that much pressure for Stade Francais. They, they want to win, right? Of but they're already they in the playoffs. They want, a home, they want a home game as well. Morgan Power wants to return here to play that home game. Of course they do, but now with three points. This could undo all the work done by Lyon. Bring them back down to one point they would take from this game if this goes over from Jory Seconds. Bit of luck as well. That ball did not look straight as it came in. It's true. I thought they were going to blow it for not straight, but they let it play. He will take every single one of his 60 seconds to chew down this clock. Six. Stop. Such a pressure cooker situation here. Leon will be hoping this doesn't go over. Sigons, he's only been on for 15 minutes. Look at that, he lands it. It is absolutely perfect. Well executed, Sigons, a hero from the tee. Stade Francais, 31. Leon, 28. But it's not finished yet. We have the last play, but it's kicked, and they haven't even kicked it up. It's been booted away. We're all the way down into Leon territory. Now, what are they going to do? Mortier picks it up. Give it to Josh. That's normally what they do. He goes oh. around the outside. Two is over. Kicks the ball. Why does he kick the ball? Ten seconds remaining. Where's this going to bounce? Where's it going to bounce? It's going to bounce, and it's been picked up here by Mick Dude. Oh, there's a... <laughs> it's been blocked. Saganadze, they have possession. This is Leon in possession. Crazy scenario. The pass has been made. What numbers? There's a kick into the corner as a possibility, but they want to keep hold of it. We've gone past the 80 minutes. Leon still in with a chance. The attempt at jackling the ball comes to nothing. Polisi's come on. 
Sopoang is there if they want him. Gomez Cordella. Drop goal, potentially. Stad oh. say it's a penalty! Penalty for Leon. Oh, my word. Now, don't tell me they're going to kick for the corner. Please, don't tell me. <laughs> they, are they going to listen to their boss? Are we going to have a, a game that finishes? I mean, this is absolutely bananas. Top Cators. The most extraordinary scenario. What are you gonna, what are you gonna do? What do you wanna do? I mean, one point. Yeah, go for the, you go, go, go. I mean, disarray. There's Why so do many they not people. go for the, one point doesn't, two points doesn't matter. One point doesn't matter. You have to, they've made the choice now. You go for the win. Like even the president's trying to work out the math. If they pick up two points and they get the draw, it means that Bayern would have to beat them with a bonus point at home next weekend. Right, but if they score, if they score a try, they qualify for the top six. So I mean, you know, they eliminate Toulon. Sopoanga kicks the the penalty. It goes over, and we finish after this absolutely. Insane game of top cattles. The final score, Paris 31, Lyon 31. Pandemonium. <laughs> Absolute mayhem. And they can't quite explain it themselves. Look at the faces. But what a game of rugby. Stade Francais 28-0 up at half-time. The game finishes 31 all. I mean... Incredible, absolutely incredible to follow. I am so interested to hear the reactions from the players because, I mean, that we didn't get one from Leon at halftime, just to give you an idea of, you know, how complicated it was for them. Thomas Lombard, part of that team in 2003 that were being celebrated uh, tonight. And... Um, they beat Toulouse in that final, of course. That was a 32-18 back in 2003. Garba Jose was playing in that final. But tonight, they get two points each. Stade Francais up to 66, level with Racing. The same number of points, joint third position, if you like. And uh, but Racing got one game, one more victory. So it's Stade Francais in fourth position. They don't move. And it's all still to play for. The shuffle in the last day. Bordeaux, Lyon, Bayon. Toulon as well, if they sneak to 62 points. But the race for the home quarter finals now is still completely up in the air. Stade Francais had the chance to solidify that there. They've just blown it. So it all comes down to the last weekend of top 14 rugby in two weekends' time. Incredible. So Lyon on 62 now. And they stay where they are. Union Bordeaux Bergle on 63, Stade Francais and Racing on 66 each. Um, just so you know, Stade Toulouse and Stade Rochelet will be the two certified semi finalists in uh, Donostia and San Sebastian uh, for the semi finals of this year's Top Cators. Who they will play, we've got no idea. At the moment, any of these teams could have home advantage still. 66 66. 63 and 62. And we don't even know who's going to finish off in the fifth and sixth positions. Union Bordeaux Begle are um, on 63, so they can still get hauled in by Bayern. I mean, we'll get a reaction from uh, Seku Makalu, I think, in a moment. Um, I want to hear from him uh, because I want to feel. Uh, oui. it, 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 here we go. Ce soir, il y a eu une forme d'euphorie en première mi-temps. Il y a eu euh, le doute. Et puis, euh, qu'est-ce qu'il y a eu à la fin bah, C'est compliqué. Franchement, c'est compliqué à analyser. Complica complicated to analyze. First euh, half was, à notre niveau. Franchement, on a was our level. Rugby. All of the ingredients. Rugby, ça joue sur demi -temps Great rugby. Uh, Went to the change rooms in a good place. Et, uh, when we came back out, and uh, they, yeah, it was just, we got hit hard in the second half. 
Qu'est-ce qui s'est qu qu dit en fait 28 points à 0 à la mi-temps, qu'est-ce que vous vous êtes dit que c'était en bonne voie Ouais, peut-être on, on est revenu trop... Yeah, we're just too confident coming back in, out into the pitch in the second half. And when they started to play, Leon, uh, they brought on some of their X-Factor players. Uh, you know, they ruffled our feathers. And uh, we didn't manage to finish off the game the way that we wanted to. Il y a cette opportunité de recevoir un barrage. Ce sera le cas si jamais vous ramenez quelque chose de La Rochelle dans 15 jours. Yeah, we'll focus on La Rochelle. In two weeks, we want to play a home playoff. But this game, we'll we'll learn we'll learn from this. Yeah, that's just the way it is. Wasn't a loss, of course. It was just a draw, but I think it was a loss. Vous aussi, comme ces coups, vous êtes passé par toutes les émotions. Etan de Mortier. Contenez-nous ce ce début de match, mais où tout était à jeter finalement. Total absence en première mi-temps. Total. De la part de notre équipe. We were invisible in the first half. On n'a pas su tenir les ballons. We didn't hold the ball. Moi notamment avec les trois quarts, on a. Me especially on the backs. Les ballons facilement et. Just made mistakes. On a mal à conserver ces balles. On a joué pendant des minutes. We didn't keep hold of the ball and. On s'est mis en difficulté. We put ourselves in trouble. Je pense que voilà, on s'est mis en difficulté. On s'est parlé comme il fallait, on a we été un peu plus, un peu dur, mais, mais je pense qu'il le fallait. We came et back euh, out voilà, en deuxième mi-temps, on, on a relevé la tête, we on, lifted a, our on a mis la marche avant et, heads et up au, and final, we moved forward and au final, j'ai envie de dire, ça, 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 ça nous sourit sur la fin quand même. And uh, yeah, yeah I'm aussi, really uh, happy at the very end, en, en semaine, les saved ourselves. À, à gérer. Et finalement, on ne reconnaissait pas Lyon en première mi-temps, on avait une forme d'abandon. No, I just think that we were absent uh, in, uh, in the first half, and it's not any reflection of the week that we had with uh, what's happening. Um, at the club. We just spoke between us and we said we needed to change things. And it's the players on the pitch who will make the difference. And we, remote, we motivated ourselves and we came back out and we played. Yeah, there was a, there was a talk of what we were going to do. Go for the corner or go for the points at the end. Uh, just allow the leaders to make the decision. And they decided to take three points. And we just follow the movement. We follow the decision. It's a group decision at the end of the day. Oh, Johnny, this is just crazy. It's not a reflection of what's been happening during the week, uh, said uh, Etan de Mortier. Uh, but, I mean, it was a reflection of basically what has happened during the week, you know, what's happened, you know, behind closed doors down in, down in the Rhone Valley because uh, that first half, they were absolutely invisible. Completely, what a comeback. Completely absent. And, as uh, again, if you, if you read into the words that he's using, we spoke between ourselves, the players we motivated ourselves, is very much a distancing of themselves from the coaching team, which isn't good. Um, but that's it. There's been a bit of a ruckus during the week. They're not enjoying their coaching staff. Clearly, the first half, they <laughs> nothing went right, and then that's it. They gave themselves a rocket yeah. at halftime. Yeah. And they showed a different face in the second half, but that's it. Still now all to play for, really even across the board, because it was completely a game divided in two. Stade Francais dominating the first half, completely Leon the second period. But as we said, it all still now comes down to the last day. Leon, who host Bayonne at their place in La Rhone Valley, Next weekend, Stade Francais, who go to La Rochelle, and if they can get anything in La Rochelle, they look likely to host a quarter final. So it will all come down to the last weekend in top 14, which it should do. I mean, superb stuff for everything to come down. We've got no idea who's going to be where. It'll all come down to the last round of games in two weekends' time. Yeah, I think we can uh, we can just say that we know that the uh, the top four teams have qualified. Just so that you know, we're sure about that um, because uh, Racing, Stade Francais, La Rochelle, and Toulouse are through. It's those fifth and sixth positions um, that we don't know who you know who's going to pinch them just yet. And positioning, you know, home home quarterfinals or home playoffs. That's what we're going to look at. Um, Watch this for Roman Tofa Fenua. He sees the ball come out and he pounces. Just keep an eye on him. He's sneaky watching around the ruck. He'll go left, he'll go right. And then all of a sudden, you'll see him. See that the ball's come out. 
He's going around, number five, Roman Tafuda. There it is, I'm going to go for it, it's out. Smart boy. Great rugby IQ from the big fella. Spotting that men in front in pink jerseys weren't bound. And well within his rights to come around the corner, you can see Alo Emil, shoulders not attached to his brother up front. So no ruck. Smartly done, and that was the catalyst. That got them back into this game. Now this time it was... Uh, Thibaut Rigard will come and jump on the bandwagon at one point. Comes out, and... Uh, here he is, picks it up after Tofa Fanua tries to go down, and there's the uh, the grounding from the big outside centre. He's a big unit, he's a big chunky, and he's very strong. That line-out was absolutely top-notch. So well worked. Marshall makes it available. Sakanadze from close range. Arate gets sent to the sin bin for the high tackle around the neck of the, the Georgian open side flanker. Brilliant play. This is just, a, it's a remarkable try, isn't it? The hands, the work, the vision. Everybody playing an integral part, the acceleration. And then finally, how about that? That try there was a moment of, of celebration for Leon. Last score. Johnny Beatty, thanks very much. It's been a pleasure. Whew. I think we need to take a, a little bit of a breather now. What a remarkable end to round 25. Round 26, the final round of the top Catalans in two weeks' time. European action next weekend with uh, Toulon in action, of course, against Glasgow in Dublin and La Rochelle, who take on Leinster in the final of the Champions Cup. From me, Robbie Nock, and from Johnny Beatty, we bid you a big bon soirée.